I think when the Western forces announced that they were going to withdraw from Afghanistan with a fixed date led by the Americans with others following suit, it became clear that this was going to be a difficult thing for Afghan military forces to handle on their own. Related to the issue of morale, there's kind of a momentum that happened. So as the Taliban began to have success after success, it kind of became self-fulfilling and they were then able to galvanize their forces. and. Uh, especially a key thing that is different this time than when they swept across Afghanistan in the 1990s is that they have extended their reach. It's not just uh, the same people who formed the backbone of the Taliban the last time when it was primarily Pashtun. Now it's, uh, there are people from all the different ethnic groups of Afghanistan, almost all, uh, much to many people's surprise. But because the non-Pashtuns are primarily in the north of the country, with them added into the mix, they had a lot more local people fighting on their side and able to help bring them to victory. It's a key thing to understand about the Taliban as well, is that you have a lot of young men who don't have any other options. They don't have a, a, a ready source of income and they have seized onto something that offers them something to believe in, some promise of a better future, of a structured belief system that they can adhere to and think is going to solve their problems and frankly most of them don't remember the old Taliban. What it actually means to live under the Taliban, all the images that are there from the 1990s of public executions and people being beaten in the street and women being mistreated terribly, most people who are involved have not actually experienced that. The Taliban have learned one thing and that is how to manage PR uh, how to try to control their PR and their image and so on. In the 90s, that's not something that they cared about. A key thing now is that they do care what the rest of the world thinks. They have put in uh, quite a bit of effort into presenting a different image to the world. They understand the power of, of image, uh, if you will, and how that affects them and their, their power at the, the negotiating table and also what the West might or might not let them do in the future and whether the West lets them govern the country. The challenge is that there's not a lot of evidence that they are actually any different. And we have loads and loads of reports coming in that in areas that they've taken over, not all, but in many areas that they've taken over, they've gone house to house searching for people. Uh, public executions are resuming. And that is the Taliban of old. Kabul, Kabul, of course, is the prize. And there are different paths by which the Taliban might come to power. The longer route, of course, is for them to simply conquer it in a very bloody street-by-street -street battle because it would be the last place that they would not have conquered. So anybody who's left to put up a resistance in Afghanistan, they'll be in Kabul. And they're going to be fighting for their lives and for what they believe in. And and for their future. We can't predict the future, but the odds are that there's going to be some type of government in Kabul that is either all Taliban because they conquered it, or there's going to be some type of transitional government with different parties involved and so on. But life is never going to be the same in Kabul uh, after a few months from now. There's nobody who really believes that. Even if the Taliban never took Kabul, what would Kabul be? It would be a besieged island in Afghanistan, and uh, that would be a very strange situation that would have to go one way or the other eventually. When we look back on the last 20 years, that's why the last 20 years have mattered. Uh, regardless of how we end up characterizing what, uh, how this ended up militarily and the, the sweeping of the country by the Taliban, millions and millions of Afghan women and girls have known under extremely difficult circumstances, that's for sure, but they have known that life doesn't have to be the way that it was in the 90s. One thing that's clear from among the reports that we're receiving from on the ground is that women are scared. In a lot of the places the Taliban have taken over, they just don't know what's going to happen, so they're not even going outside, because you might go outside and risk your life, because you're not wearing the appropriate clothing in the eyes of the Taliban. There's a lot of optimism out there that that um, that door that was open, that was able to be open because of the last 20 years, that that can, can never shut completely and that somehow or other women are going to carry on 
however it is that it happened. We knew that from the five years the Taliban ruled in the 90s, that things were happening underground and so on. I mean, frankly, we're talking on the level of uh, secret schools where girls were being taught um, and you know, that type of activity might happen. But you can't oppress half the population forever. 